Are we truly in a sweet spot where we can avoid recession despite a slowdown? Or are we celebrating prematurely and just entering the point at which we'll know the full effect of the Fed's rate hikes and all this bank turmoil? For more, let's bring in Moody's Analytics Chief Economist Mark Zandi with the aforementioned Steve Leesman, our Chief Economics Correspondent. Welcome to both of you. Steve, let's start with Waller's comments. Obviously, he, he was saying more than that, but he, like many, were really cheering the data, fewer job openings and labor market moderation that we saw last week. Yeah, I mean, let's just put Waller in a little bit of context. You know, when he doesn't frown, it's like he's smiling, right? I mean, he's not the most jubilant uh, person to begin with. But, and, he, and I wouldn't say he was ebullient about the data, but he was not that bad about it. He's a little bit more on the hawkish side, sounded a little bit more on the dovish side, in no particular hurry, would hike again. I do want to make a remark about Goldman's call. It's not remarkable to me they went from 20 to 15. What's remarkable is they're doubling down on saying the chance of recession is less than average. Yeah, way okay? less than average. Okay, so in any given year, there's a one in four, one in five chance of a recession happening. I don't think Jan is really going crazy about going 2015. I think what he's saying to, to, to us in this call is that it's a less than average chance, which is pretty significant. I don't necessarily see the data that way. I don't feel like we're out of the woods on all the possibilities that could create a recession. But certainly we've come a long way in terms of defying the recession probabilities that have been and out there. And he's been correct about that, you know, to, to his credit, which is why, Mark, he's so worth listening to on this. There, you know, the, some would say the biggest reason why we're holding in there is fiscal stimulus and fiscal spending. But Hatzius also says, number one, he thinks that the labor market's going to hold up. So income growth will support spending. And number two, and I thought this was interesting, he thought the Fed's rate hikes would be fully felt in the economy by early 2024, whereas others seem to be waiting for more of a lag. Well, I'm optimistic, Kelly. I, you know, I, I, I'm not as optimistic as Jan uh, uh, at 15 percent. You know, Steve, I think that's actually the average probability of recession. If you have a recession every six or seven years. So he's, I think he's saying, you know, kind of typical recession odds. I think that's a little bit optimistic, but I'm optimistic as well. I mean, I, I do think that uh, with inflation coming in as gracefully as it is, uh, in large part because that inflation is the result of the supply shocks created by the pandemic and Russian war, and as those shocks fade into the rearview mirror, we're getting inflation back in without any real damage to the labor market and to the broader economy. I think that's the most significant reason for optimism. And as that inflation comes in, you know, now wage growth is stronger than inflation. So we are seeing so-called real wage gains. People's purchasing power is improving. And that allows folks to continue to spend as long as the consumer hangs tough, you know, continues to do what they typically do. Uh, recession doesn't look likely.